NCHC play is back and it starts with a pair of statement wins in Grand Forks. Welcome to another edition of North Dakota Hockey Central, your television home for all things UND hockey. I'm Alex Seinert. Coming up, we will get the thoughts of head coach Brad Berry on his team's impressive showing against a longtime rival. Plus, we'll go inside Connor Ford's kitchen to help you get to know the grad transfer a little better. First, though, it is time for this week's installment of UND Insider's web series, Through These Doors. Through These Doors is presented by Gate City Bank. Hockey Hall of Fame game took UND to Music City to take on Penn State at Bridgestone Arena. It was something we were looking forward to, had it circled on our calendars, um, not getting to go last year. Made it even more exciting that we were going to get to go and all the fans still had their travel plans and it was, uh, it was really cool to see everyone there. Um, going there a couple days early, um, you know, coaches were nice enough to let us kind of experience the town a little bit, go walk around Broadway, then come back and you know, just embrace that and get the whole vibe of the weekend in and uh, yeah, then kind of turn the page to the game and got to focus on that and yeah, it was an all around good experience. Yeah, I know my I know my parents went to Vegas a few years ago for that game, so I know they were talking to me about it and how exciting and how, how crazy it gets. So I mean, I think we were all just really excited and just ready to play in front of a bunch of fans, but I don't think any of us expected it to be how it was, but it was crazy and we, uh, we loved the support. Yeah, it was uh, tremendous excitement building up to it. You know, uh, we uh, had Vegas our freshman year, so we kind of knew uh, how the well of the fans traveled and um, kind of what we were going to experience kind of going into it. And, you know, we kind of just shared that experience, what we had in Vegas with all the other guys on the team. And, you know, that definitely helped get everyone's excitement up. and. Um, you know, once we got there, it was just truly amazing seeing all the UND fans out um, on Broadway and just all around and the tremendous support they, they showed us the entire weekend. It was just unbelievable and something, you know, all of us will never forget. Yeah, well, obviously it holds a little bit more than a Ralph, but honestly it felt a lot like a Ralph game. Um, just with all the fans there, um, you know, it felt like a home game and our facilities here are absolutely beautiful too. So. Um, wasn't too far off, but obviously pretty special. And a huge thanks to Nashville, obviously letting us come in and use their locker room and their facilities. And yeah, it was all around pretty special. Playing in front of all those fans, obviously, and experiencing the locker room and everything like that, that was really cool. I mean, I wish we had a different result in the game, but just playing in front of all those uh, fans and just having a blast, that was, it was really fun. It was really, really cool to experience and, you know, to get the unique opportunity and kind of see uh, their um, locker room set up and um, just kind of how it is at the next level. And it's something really cool to experience and uh, just cherish with you for the rest of your life, uh, just having that experience and, you know, being able to kind of tell people, like, you know, we were in the National Predators locker room and we, uh, you know, got dressed out of there and kind of be in their area. And, yeah, it was just really awesome. Opportunities like this one give the players an experience they will not quickly forget. Yeah, I think the one thing I took away was just how loyal our fans are and how amazing they are. I mean, they, they all made the trip to Nashville for a reason because they're the best fans in college hockey and how much they love us. And we just appreciate them and we all just had a fun, uh, fun time because of them. Sometimes you forget, like, everything that is given to us and um, you know they provide us with a lot here and a lot of extras stuff we don't need but they also expect a lot out of us in return 
um, that's something we'll take into the rest of the season for sure. Um, just, you know, how amazing our fans are. I mean, they are the best fans in college hockey, the way they travel and, you know, always show their support um, no matter what and just how loud they can get. And they're just unbelievable and awesome. It's just truly amazing to experience, you know, walking down Broadway and, you know, just seeing everyone in UND gear, um, you know, flying flags and all that fun stuff. So it's just really awesome to experience all that. Good stuff. Well done by Cassie Niles and the entire Through These Doors crew. North Dakota Hockey Central continues after this with a recap of UND's perfect start to conference play with head coach Brad Berry. That's next. Back to North Dakota Hockey Central. Time now for our weekly conversation with UND head coach Brad Berry, who joins me now from inside Ralph Engelstad Arena. Brad, thanks for being with us. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Well, after a few eventful days in Nashville for the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame game, this past week saw you return home to Grand Forks for a two-game series against Denver. Destination games are special, but was it nice to get back into the regular routine this week? Yeah, it was. You know, uh, you know, we were on the road for the last couple of weeks, and uh, you know, I thought for the for the most part, uh, you know, when you get back to the Ralph, there's familiarity and certainty, and kind of a schedule, a routine that you go through to to get ready for a weekend here. And you know, uh, I thought the Hall of Fame weekend was outstanding, and the fact that we had a lot of fans there, and it was a great, great, great experience for not only the fans but our players. But you know, getting back into uh, Two games at the Ralph NCHC weekend against Denver. It brings some familiarity and certainty, and uh, and our guys look forward to that. Opening weekend in the NCHC always sees the intensity on the ice rays a little bit. What was said to your team's 14 newcomers to help them prepare for the start of conference play? Well, you know, uh, it was a message of now we're into the NCHC season. It's 24 games. It's it's a gauntlet. It's a grind to get through and. You know, the last couple of years we had a lot of success because we were dialed in and focused and uh, and there was, there was a mindset there. So, you know, it helped being at home. Uh, it helped uh, having a group here that, uh, you know, knew we had to get better. And I thought we had a really good week of practice building up to the Denver weekend. And, uh, and our guys executed and worked hard in practice and it translated in the game. So, again, it's just one weekend. But now, you know, the message after was we have to continue that. We have to keep building and growing as a team, we, even with the 14 new players in our lineup. Both games this past weekend against the Pioneers played out in similar fashion. Talk about the pair of strong starts for your team that helped you establish two goal leads on both nights. Well, and again, that's that was a, a focus of ours is trying to have better starts. I know we started the season with that and then we got away from it a little bit uh, through the non-conference and, and knowing how important it is to lead games and not chase games. Uh, you know, there's a correlation of winning games with the lead versus chasing them. And, and what we did was we, we wanted to focus on the first five minutes of each game and on Friday night I thought we did. I thought we came out and had some jump and you know it was a situation where we backed off a little bit probably towards the middle part of the game and the end of the game but I thought on Friday night we had the jump uh, to, to, to start the, the two game weekend. Denver led the country in scoring entering the weekend so to counter some of that firepower you put together a shutdown line of Mark Sendon, Gavin Hain and Louis Jamernick. That three were fantastic all weekend. You had to like what you saw from that trio all series. Yeah, you know what? They, they had a mindset, and, it, and we got ahead of it too. And, you know, when we do pre-scout of the other teams, we see kind of their line combinations and, and what, they, what they bring to the table. And what we saw was, you know, they had three excellent players on, on the same line, uh, you know, that was doing all their damage five on five and power play as far as their offensive production. So, you know, going to years past, you know, uh, to our national championship year with the heavy line that, that kind of mirrored or shattered that line, we had a lot of success beating Denver in the semifinal. And then, you know, last year, you know, Louis Jamernick, Mark Sennon and Gavin Hain played together towards the end of last year before Sennon got hurt. And, you know, we had success there. And, uh, you know, so you always go back in history on what works, especially against good offensive teams. And, and, and they executed to a tee this weekend. Those three epitomized that defensive solidity your team showed on Friday and Saturday. Where did you see improvements in that side of the game from your previous outing against Penn State? Yeah, well, I think we're a little bit loose in our game uh, against Penn State. I think uh, let's start with being, you know, everybody trying to do a little bit too much. Everybody cares on our team, and I think everybody cared a little bit too much by trying to do everybody else's job. And, 
and didn't, instead of just doing their job and 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 in saying doing that you're you're counterproductive you 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 give up odd man rushes you turn pucks over and and you're loose in your your structure of your game and and I thought where we were really good especially I think Saturday against Denver was maybe even a little bit better than Friday was just bearing down and, and having good support in the offensive zone with a third forward and then in a defensive zone as far as having tight uh, checking, giving, not giving them time and space in the defensive zone and making sure that we had really good, strong net front coverage. Yeah, good team effort from start to finish. Uh, Zach Driscoll played a big part in your success as well with 43 saves and just two goals allowed over the weekends. It feels like he's becoming more and more comfortable with each game. Yeah, he does look like that. You know, I know he started the season very sharp and then, you know, just like the rest of the team, we kind of just took a, not a step back, but we were just kind of plateauing a little bit and, and now he's, he's taking it up a notch again and I think that's, that's probably getting used to how we do things, getting used to our league uh, uh, and, and getting used to uh, our culture here as far as the day to day. So, uh, you know what, hats off to him. We needed him to step up this weekend and I thought he did an outstanding job in both games. Now. At the end of Saturday's contest, things did go off the rails a little bit. Do you almost expect this to happen when you play a team like Denver that you've got so much history with? 100%. You know, uh, obviously it's, you know, both teams are very competitive. Uh, bo both teams are, are highly ranked teams usually every year. And I think it's a situation where, like you said, Alex, uh, the, the rivalry over the course of uh, uh, the past few years, especially, uh, it's elevated in, 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 in being in an intense competitive series. And, you know, like I said, nobody wants to go down uh, with a loss. And obviously on Saturday night, you know, they, they knew they, they, we had a couple goal lead on them and, you know, they wanted to fight back. And, uh, and again, it's a situation that we got to make sure we stay disciplined and have a pushback and an answer, but we got to stay disciplined in those areas. Well, in the end, you claim a 3-1 win on Friday, a 4-1 victory Saturday. After a few weekends without back-to-back -back wins, how much of a confidence boost does this sweep provide your group? Well, it... it, it, it it, it's everything, you know, uh, you know, over the course of the last couple of weeks when we were on the road, you know, it wasn't the results we wanted. Uh, we, we got a split out of Quinnipiac, which was, was good, you know, against a very good team. But our showing, you know, in Nashville with all our fans there, that kind of left a thorn in our side a little bit on, on kind of leaving uh, our game on the table, not bringing what we needed to do. And, and our guys have pride and, and they, uh, they showed it against Denver. And, and again, winning Friday night, it's always so tough in the NCHC to win on a Saturday night to get, get the sweep. You saw this weekend, no other team uh, uh, got, got full sweeps. We got the full six points. St. Cloud got five out of six, but it's so tough to uh, completely sweep a weekend and you have to have that internal focus. You now hit the road east once again, this time to Oxford, Ohio, to take on Miami. And not much is expected of this Red Hawks team entering this season, but they've been in every game they've played in, and they split on the road with Omaha this past weekend. What's your read on the team that Chris Bergeron has assembled for this season? Well, vastly improved. You know, Chris took Chris Bergeron took over a few years ago, and you know he's he's brought in his players and put a stamp on the program on as far as how they want to play. And and you're seeing the uh, I guess the uh, results right now in a short time. And uh, you know, anytime you go into Omaha, Omaha is a really good, experienced team this year. And and you get one game out of there, uh, you're doing something right. And you know they have very good goaltending uh, with with uh, their their goaltender and. And they have a very structured game that they play really hard. And, uh, and we're going to have to make sure we're ready. We're going into uh, an environment where we're going on the road again. And we got to make sure that we know who we're dealing with. And, uh, and it's a vastly improved Miami team. Now, your next two home weekends later this month feature marquee rivalry series against Minnesota Duluth and Minnesota. Knowing what's ahead, how do you keep the team focused on the task at hand this weekend in Oxford? Short term memory, you know, and uh, I think it's, it's a short term focus, you know. Uh, you know, we got we to obviously uh, move past the Denver weekend. You know, we learn from it on how we have to play with our identity, but now we got to move forward here and, uh, and, and really have that short term focus on getting the most on each practice going forward. It's very easy to kind of lose focus and, and look at, hey, we got Miami, then we got Duluth, then we got Gophers on Thanksgiving. Can't do that. We got to make sure that we have to remember how we need to play as a team and, and what our culture is all about, and then just kind of just keep building and growing as a group with that short term focus. Now, well, there are no easy games in this league, that's for sure. And we're excited to see how your team fares this weekend. Safe travels, Brad, and best of luck out in Oxford. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Next up on North Dakota Hockey Central, we're going from the Ralph to the kitchen as UND's top chef, Connor Ford, shows off his skills on the stovetop. Stay tuned.
Graduate transfer Connor Ford arrived this summer in Grand Forks with over 50 career goals, 100 career points, and a pair of all WCHA honors on his resume from his time at Bowling Green. The Pittsburgh native has quickly established himself as UND's top centerman, but Ford's also earned credit among his new teammates for his culinary skills, a reputation we had to see and taste for ourselves. I've always loved food and trying new foods, but I really never enjoyed cooking. Midway through my junior year um, at Bowling Green, I uh, kind of start to take the nutrition side more seriously. And when you're cooking for yourself um, twice a day, most days, um, I kind of started to invest in uh, what I should be eating and that led to me uh, kind of experimenting with cooking different kinds, kinds of stuff. So I'm making a, like a one pot gnocchi pork sausage uh, dish. So we're, gonna, we're cooking the, the sausage here, let it brown, um, and then we're gonna add pretty much everything. Uh, the diced tomatoes, the gnocchi, uh, some water, some seasonings. Let that cook until um, the, the gnocchi softens. Um, and then we'll, we'll throw some spinach in there and some cheese and that's it. Pretty quick and easy. Making a home cooked meal, starting with you know, ingredients and, and it's something you can be proud of at the end and you know, enjoy eating something that, that you made. At the time when I first found this, I had never made something with gnocchi, and I liked gnocchi, so it was kind of the perfect, perfect storm. I just wasn't very creative in the kitchen at all. Like this is something I would never make unless somebody showed me how. It is a good little, you know, distraction. You know, sometimes we get some music going, and it's a, it's a good stress relief. Um, just something to escape. This is my one addition to the recipe, a little spice. When you start to realize what you could add, then it's, it's a little bit different, a little more confident in the kitchen. <laughs> Chad St. Mary's, Coach Tom Ward, uh, really harped on the defensive side of the game as a, as a centerman and a forward. Um, so I've kind of evolved that game, part of my game, which is something that you know, a lot of guys um, kind of lack, and that's kind of my niche, um, and at the same time, you know, trying to produce offense, and I've, I've had success scoring goals. I haven't lit a kitchen on fire, I haven't lit a grill on fire yet. Um, I set the fire alarm off. It's only a matter of time. Yeah, it doesn't take long. Personally, I look at this place as the mecca of college hockey, and the ultimate goal for me is to move on professionally um, as a hockey player. And I feel that you know the history of, of this place and uh, the history of the players they sent to the next level put me in the best position, along with the immediate opportunity with all the guys leaving, the lineup opportunity for me. Um, it all just kind of came together to the perfect storm. This was the right spot. If I can cut the mozzarella, that'll be a little bit exciting. How about that? <laughs> Ashton scored a bunch of goals against Bowling Green last year, and I've been stuffed by Zach Durst's goal more than once. It's kind of what I would imagine pro, pro hockey would be like, kind of guys getting traded and moving around. Um, so it's definitely good to have that kind of experience, you know, meeting a whole new group of guys and meeting guys that you've played against before. It's nice to know, like, this is it. Like, this is my last year. I get to be at the greatest place in the world. Experience, you know, being treated the best you could be treated in college hockey, um, and I'm going to treat it like my first year pro, and just do the very best I can out on the ice. I'm not going to be scared to fail, and just go for it. That's pretty good. It's edible. <laughs> Connor's being hard on himself. It was actually a pretty good meal. Ford was banged up during the series against Denver and did not play in game number two, but Bradbury is hopeful he'll be back for you in these upcoming series against Miami. We will preview that road matchup against the Red Hawks and check out the rest of the NCHC schedule right after this.
Let's check in on what's happening around college hockey, starting with this week's USCHO.com poll, where St. Cloud State is holding down top spot for a third consecutive week. The Huskies are one of six NCHC teams in the top 14. That's one more than the Big Ten and Hockey East have in the top 20. The second week of conference play in the National Collegiate Hockey Conference sees all eight schools in action against each other for the second straight week. That will be the last time it happens until mid-January. Omaha travels to St. Cloud and Western goes to Denver in a pair of matchups between ranked teams this weekend. North Dakota, meanwhile, will travel to Miami for the first time since January of 2020, looking to build off the momentum earned after an impressive home sweep of DU. I noticed just the week leading up, it was pretty uh, emphasis on this is conference play. You know, we're playing Denver, who's a big rival of us in the past. So I'd say the preparation was a little bit more intense, so to say. So I think that kind of helped us uh, this weekend. I don't think that a lot of people expected this this weekend from us. Um, and I mean, I, I think we're here to show we have a lot of belief within our group and we know what we're capable of. Uh, we have a lot of new faces, but uh, we, got a, we got a great locker room in there. And I think that showed this weekend and we're going to continue to prove that. I think when we come out each, um, we can get rolling lines and, and just come out and be physical and, and play that hard skill that's, that's uh, in our culture. And um, I think when we do that, it's, it's tough to beat us. So um, we're just going to look to keep doing the same things we did this weekend. Number seven, North Dakota versus Miami from Goggin Ice Center. Game one from Oxford begins Friday at 6 p.m. Central with game two Saturday at 4 p.m. You can stream those contests on nchc.tv. We hope you enjoy the hockey from the Buckeye State this weekend, but if you miss any of the action, we will fill you in on what you missed on the next North Dakota Hockey Central one week from now. On behalf of our Midco Sports crew, I'm Alex Seinert. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.